Good afternoon. It's March of 2020 and I want to make a video uh, describing my pellet boiler. And I'm going to start with a general overview of what it is. Uh, first it's called a Pellet Duo 40. That's the model. Uh, it was purchased from a company called MB Tech up in Pennsylvania. And uh, it's, a, it's a general hot water boiler. It's designed it's a multi-fuel boiler, but it's designed to burn primarily wood pellets. Uh, of course, this is it right in front of me here. It uses a standard uh, stove pipe like you would have on a wood stove. Uh, it's full of water. As I said, it is uh, multi-fuel, so it's designed to burn wood pellets, uh, corn, cherry pits, uh, a multitude of biofuels. Uh, but you can also put it in manual mode and just burn logs in it. And that is what this center door is for. That is a fire pit if you want to just load logs into it, wood logs. For all your other biofuels, they're fed from the hopper over here. And they're, and they're fed up with a motor. And they drop down through this tube and come to the lower chamber. That's your actual burn chamber down there. And so the fire happens down here in the bottom. And this top chamber here, that's where your heat exchangers are at. And so as you can see, uh, this is the hopper right here. This is what holds all the pellets. Or, well, I'm burning pellets. But if you burn other biofuels, I suppose you put them in here too. Now, I've just reloaded it. Uh, it holds approximately 600 pounds of pellets. It's probably a little more, but when it's when you run all the way out, there's still a little bit of pellets left in the bottom. So I'm just going to say it holds 16, I'm sorry, 15 bags of pellets, uh, which is about 400 pounds. Uh, this is the feeder motor right here. Uh, so when it calls for, when, when the unit calls for fire to heat the water back up, it runs this motor, which feeds the pellets up this tube, and they fall by gravity down here. To the burn chamber and this is the fan this blows air into the chamber uh, underneath here is uh, the lower feed motor and the blemo uh, and, the, and the ignition the blemo is like a plate that slides back and forth uh, and wait, I'm gonna pause the video for just a minute all right so now this is with the cover off this down here this is your blemo See this this piece right here, that's part of the plate in the burner chamber, and this slides in and out really, really slowly. You can when this is running, you barely can see this move. Uh, but it does that to help keep the grates clean inside and to help uh feed the ashes out of the burn chamber and into the boiler. This here is your lower feed motor. Uh, when the pellets drop down this tube, they come into uh, into this feed motor and this feed motor pushes them out into the combustion chamber. Now the fan, obviously I talked about the fan, it's right here blowing air into the combustion chamber uh, to aid the combustion process. Uh, and if you look on this side, your main harness comes down and connects right here. Uh, now there's no electronics right here. All this is is a connection board. All these connectors plug in here and all this does is a circuit board on the back there's no components on the circuit board, it's just electrical traces that connect all these wires together. Uh, all, your, all your controls, all your electronics per se, are right here in the controller. Uh, this is just a connection board. Uh, I don't think you can see the ignition. Let's see if I can get a view of the igniter. So, this is the igniter right here. Uh, and there's also a flame sensor here. And the igniter is, uh, it's a, it looks like a ceramic tube. And when the ignition process starts, uh, it starts glowing red. It's red hot. And the fan, as it's blowing air, there's air blowing through the center of that ceramic tube. And that air gets heated really hot. And it's that hot air that causes the ignition process. So I suppose you'd call that a hot air ignition system. I don't know if that's the technical term for it, but that's what I'll call it. Alright, so I've put the cover back on. <clears throat> I'm going to continue with the overview. 
So one thing you need to know about any type of wood pellet heat, probably any type of wood heat period, but you know, if you're burning pellets, whether you got a pellet stove or pellet boiler, it doesn't matter. They're uh, they're they're dirty. Burning wood pellets is dirty. So keep this in mind when you're thinking about where to place your boiler. Uh, as you can see, uh, this dust right here. Uh, that's that's normal byproducts. You know, as the pellets are coming down here, uh, there's an anti-flame flap in here. The pellets come down, they hit this flap, and that flap opens, allows the pellets to fall down into the burn chamber, or actually to the feeder motor. But in normal operation, when it's not feeding pellets, that flap stays closed so that to prevent fire from coming up if there was a malfunction. And uh, that's also what this sensor is for. That's a temperature sensor. Uh, so there's multiple safeties in place to prevent fire from, you know, running up your feed tube and causing, you know, a larger fire. But anyway, the point of that was, when the pellets are falling down here, uh, it's spitting dust out the side right here. And when, whenever you load pellets into your hopper, they're creating dust. There's dust in the bags. There's just a lot of dust. There's ash. And so the dust you're seeing here, uh, the last time I cleaned this, uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've cleaned this, and I've burned, I've burned about a thousand pounds of pellets. And uh, you can see, you see the dust on top. Now I cleaned all that off, you know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I got a, I bought a, a, a pellet vacuum. It's a vacuum cleaner. It's like a little shop vac. It's designed for wood stoves and wood pellets and things like that. And so I vacuumed the whole thing off. So this is the dust that's accumulated after building, burning a thousand pounds of pellets or thereabouts. Uh, and it's not a problem for me. You know, I've got it down. Uh, underneath my house is not in the living area and so it's not a drawback I'm not worried about the dust it doesn't cause a problem you know I, I clean it every few weeks you know and it's never caused me any issues so but it is something to be aware of if you're planning on putting this in your basement you know if you have a finished basement or something dust could be an issue so you're gonna want this seg segregated from the rest of your living space you know even if you build a small room around it or something you're not going to want all this dust out in your living space. Uh, so, these three chambers, uh, like I said, it's a duo fuel. So, when you clean it, you have to open all these chambers up and clean inside. And they're just, they've just got these levers that lock the door shut. And so you just pull up on the lever, and you know, the whole thing just swings open. And you see the, the rubber tube just bends, it's no problem. Uh, and like I said, this ash, yeah, that's my little stormy cat, she's getting the camera shot too. This ash, this is from burning about a thousand pounds of pellets. Uh, and so I don't clean it very often. It doesn't need to be cleaned very often, honestly. Uh, it works just fine. You know, I think they refer to this here as slag. And it is ash too, but it's 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 more solid you know and apparently the uh the quality of the pellets that you burn changes how much slag is produced and i have burned some cheap pellets and i did notice that it produced more slag good kitty stormy <laughs> all right so that's the lower chamber this is the burner chamber all your fire happens right in here and it blows all the ash out into the boiler, into this area here. And so when I clean it, I get in here with a scoop and I scoop all the ash out and then I vacuum it when I'm done. This center chamber, this is where you burn your, your solid fuel. You know, if you were gonna burn logs, you would load them in here. Of course, switch it into manual mode first. And I haven't tried that yet. Uh, there's grates in there. And I have the grates pulled back, you know, uh, to open up that area in the back to allow more airflow, and I'm not sure if that's necessary, but it is something that I do. And you can see, of course, the, uh, the buildup of ash here. Yeah, it it produces ash. You know, it's you're burning a solid fuel, and this is the top chamber. This is where your heat exchangers are at. 
And this is probably the most, the part that requires the most intricate cleaning of the whole thing. Here, when you clean this, you have to pull these baffles out. And I'm sorry if the camera view is not always right. I'm, I'm I don't make a lot of videos, so. But anyway, you pull these baffles out, and uh, I'm gonna clean these tubes. And uh, they supply when you get your uh, boiler. It comes with this long brush. There, now you can see the whole thing. So that brush, you pull the baffles out, and you run the brush down these tubes. It's just like a chimney sweep. And uh, that is the most difficult part of cleaning it, and creates the most mess of anything you do. Because when you run that brush through there, you can see the dust coming off that. But when you run that brush through there, it pulls all kinds of dust out. So that's the dirtiest part of cleaning, uh, is cleaning these, these heat exchanger tubes. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've, I've been running a couple weeks now, I've been a thousand pounds of pellets burned through it, and it's still fine. I keep running, I don't need to clean it, you know, maybe I will, but I, I've run it longer than that. I've, I've run, I think I've run over a ton of pellets through it without cleaning it. Uh, so it's not real critical to clean it every day. Every day. Uh, apparently the more you clean it the more efficiently it burns uh, because you get better heat transfer up here when your heat and your, your fire is burning the less buildup you have here the more heat is transmitted through the metal into your water so cleaning it will increase your efficiency uh, but I haven't I haven't seen any need to clean it very often myself it seems to burn just fine So let me step back, I'll give you a view with all three doors open there. Sorry, there's not much space in here, so I've got it installed in a really tight area. All right. So next, I want to talk about the hopper over right here next. All right, so the hopper this is where you load all your pellets in. I think I already talked about it. Uh, it holds 600 pounds of pellets. Uh, and I typically burn... I've got an, This is an old farmhouse I'm heating from the 1800s. And it's very poorly insulated. Uh, and especially when the wind blows. When the wind blows, man, all the heat just blows right out of this house. But on average, I burn anywhere from one to two bags of pellets per day. So, in a week, seven days, uh, I would burn up to 14, sometimes, yeah, around 14 bags of pellets. Uh, you know, that's on the high side. Uh, when it's warm out, like this, this past week, uh, other, than, other than last night and the day and yesterday, it was warm all week, and then... Uh, warm as in it was in the 50s during the day and at night last night it snowed and the wind was blowing and so we had cold weather last night but over the past seven days I burned nine bags of pellets so that's on the low side so one to two bags per day is what I burn in my pellet duo 40 uh, and your mileage will vary depending on your house primarily uh, the better insulated your house is the less work this thing has to do When you receive your boiler, this is the manual that will come with it. And it's it's an okay manual. This this provides, you know, all the the mechanical specifications and it's it's a general manual, it's not specifically for this boiler. It covers other boilers that they sell. Uh, as you see it shows different hydraulic diagrams, you know, for ways that you hook your system up. Uh, this is the general overview manual. There's a lot more available on their website. Uh, if you go on there to download it, and I downloaded this and printed it off, and this is the manual for the controller itself. And it goes into a lot of detail about uh, the different types of settings 
and adjustments.